Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to part two of how to paint a model. So in this part, we're going to be focusing on the painting and the deckling for the Steyr model that we built in the previous video. So first things first, we're going to be needing some surface primer and some airbrush thinner. So in this case, they're from Vallejo. So I like to use a, a primer to prepare the, the model surface. It gives us a very good and solid a pre layer of paint to paint on top of. So a primer is very handy for this. Um, it gives us a very smooth and even playing field. So for the actual painting of the model, we're going to be using Vallejo's German Afrikor 1942-44 paint set. So this gets, gives us a couple of colors to do the sand yellow style camouflage as well as some of the green camo that he's upon on top of it. And we get six colors and they're in the smaller um, bottles. So it's just enough for you to paint one small model. Um, I would find, at least as we did this project, that if you tried to paint anything bigger than this Steyr um, wagon, you would probably find yourself running out of paint ever so slightly. And in the next video, we're gonna be using their weathering set for yellow gray vehicles, but more on that on the next video. For the decals, we need a gloss varnish as well as prepare, uh, preparing it for the weathering process. So we'll be using Vallejo gloss acrylic varnish. However, you can use any type of varnish or gloss varnish you have. There's plenty of them out there, like such as Aqua Gloss or uh, many of the Rattle Can um, varnishes out there. Also, we're going to need a decal solution, which is in this case Microset, and this is basically a decal softener, and what it does is it allows the decal to conform to any surface on the model. So first things first, we have to break down the model into its sub-assemblies, and we're going to take some cut down cocktail skewers, and we're going to start uh, preparing the model spring. So these cocktail um, skewers, along with some blue tack, will make very handy little handles as well as using some bottles in this case some AK weathering product bottles and just basically glue tack them onto the bottles and the skewers and that gives us a very very um, simple and very handy um, painting tool and handle this makes life very easy and I just have a piece of old foam and that just makes life very very much more easy for us So I'm just actually cutting down some of these skews so I can actually friction fit them into the wheel hubs. It's a simple little trick but it does make a big difference. So now we're going to start laying down the first layer of paint. So we're going to be using their surface primer grey, which is German grey or Panzer grey. 
So you could literally just actually have put this first color down and forgot the gray primer. Um, at the time, I actually thought this was a model air color. So I'm just gonna spray it in. I'm gonna take our um, airbrush thinner and I'm literally just gonna put a drop in. I don't want this to be too thick, but I don't want it to over thin it either. So one drop and I'm just going to basically catch the needle and put a little bit of air through the cup. And what I'll do is I'll back flow the cup and mix the paint and thinner together. I'm going to start working in this color and this is going to be our, our base color for our camouflage uh, pattern that we'll start working up in the next couple of minutes. So a base color and a primer are two separate things. A base color is to do with relation to the camouflage or the main color of the fake we're painting, whereas a primer is more to prepare the plastic for painting. Both do slightly different things and they both behave in slightly different ways as a primer has different properties to a paint. Now I'm using this primer as a base color just because it's in the set and it happens to be the correct color. So if you have the right color, you can literally skip a step and a primer, a color primer does both your base color and prime your model. Now you will see I do small little sprays at a time you know I don't try to cover everything in one big long blast I just pick a little section spray it I move on somewhere else for a couple of seconds and that just stops me from flooding the model with too much color often too with these darker colors sometimes you can't really see how much paint is going on to the model any one time it has a tendency to confuse the eye so I find do a quick little spray move the model spray it on somewhere new like I'm doing here I'll do a quick coat and I'm only literally, so I'm using a double action hard run Steenbeck air, airbrush. So when you push down, you get air and when you pull back the trigger, you get paint. And the motion I'm really doing here is I'm half pushing down and half pulling back. So I'm only getting a little bit of paint and a little bit of air. And that's giving me a lot of control on the amount of paint on the model. And this is something that you can practice with various kits and just get used to your double action airbrushes. But it does give you unrivaled control. Now, my paint is getting a little bit thick there. You can see it's spitting at places, which is down to me not um, tinning it maybe correctly. Because it's starting to dry in my nozzle a little bit. So I did have to add just a little bit of thinner off camera. Let's literally another drop and mix it in and we were fine. I'm also going to spray the entire wheels with this color because the Panzer Grey will make a great rubber color. And then we'll come back and we'll paint the hubs of the tire in the, or the hubs of the wheel in the camouflage color that we'll be painting in the next couple of steps. And again, I'm just keeping the airbrush always moving, keep it always moving. And this will help you prevent flooding the model. It's very frustrating if you do flood the model because you'll have to wipe it away and start again. So now I'm going to start our first layer of camouflage and this is going to be done with camouflage brown model layer number 117. And again this has been put into my airbrush and one or two drops of thinner. Now I'm going to put very very light layers on at a time. You can see almost that I'm almost misting it onto the model and I'm allowing the grey to show through in certain places. This will add a nice contrast, it will also give the impression of the paint underneath it. And you can just see how light the paint is and I'm just slowly building it up and then I'll move on to the other place, let that dry for a couple of seconds and come back and build it up again. And you can literally leave some of the grey in certain areas if you want, meaning like, you know, um, like a shadow area, maybe in some of the, the recesses or some of the seam lines or the uh, panel lines and add like a pre-shade to that, like almost like with an aircraft if you wish. My airbrush needle's a little bit too big for that, I'm using a 0 0.3 needle. So it's just a little bit big um, spray arc for doing such small work. But if you keep your airbrush free, um, free on a small amount of paint, keep it always moving and just slowly build it up, you can still achieve this effect. 
and you can see then I'll come back and I'll build it up and also the colour just pops out. But the trick is take your time, take your time. And if you're brush painting this, uh, best thing to do is you, um, you can literally brush paint um, model air directly out of the, the bottle and it's already pre-tinned so it actually means you don't have to de-tin it yourself. And just use um, like a wide bristle brush and it's literally a small amount of paint and build it up that way. You can be done with a brush and you can get a nice effect out of it. You just have to be a bit patient and build in multiple layers. It does take a long time, but again, wide brushes, a little bit of paint, and subsequent layers slowly build it up. And it's somewhat the same principle here with the airbrush. It's small amount of paint and subsequent layers. And again, I'm keeping my piece always moving. I'm not spraying into the same area for more than a couple of seconds at a time. And I'm again just putting a small amount of pressure. It's basically half air, half paint. And that gives me a lot of control. And again, I'm keeping an eye on where my airbrush is pointed. You know, I'm not just I was like, you have to also kind of get into the habit of making sure your airbrush is pointed to where you actually want it rather than just focusing on the model. It seems a bit silly to say that, but it does make a difference. Now you can see here, I just very quickly blasted the entire side, but again, it was a very little, little amount of paint and I kept the airbrush moving. And now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna fill it in. And I do want to keep some of that gray um, present in certain places. Now I went, I a lot, I'm gonna end up losing a lot of the gray, which was something that I didn't really want to happen. But again, I'm using too big a needle. If I was using a 0.2 needle, um, I'd have ultimate control and I could have done small amounts of paint in very fine lines and kept some of the grey shadows. Again, we can achieve some of this contrast when we come back to weathering this model in the late next video. So now I'm going to take... Um, it's a, this is a very tried and tested method and it's something I've never used before because it's very hard to find these circle templates in technical graphic or um, stationary shops anymore. But I'm basically going to use this to mask off the hubs of the, the wheels and I'm going to spray in our camouflage brown into them. Only a little bit of paint at a time. Again, we don't want to swamp this area with paint since it's such a concentrated area. And I'm going to do that for all the wheels. So now we're going to take sand yellow number 028 and we're going to start doing some panel highlights. So we're going to again tin down our paint with us a drop or two of thinner and we're going to focus this color into the center of all the panels. And this is going to represent um, sun fading and wear and tear. So this is actually in a way the first layer of weathering in a sense and it's also going to give a lot of visual interest to the model. But the trick is a small amount of paint. I am barely pulling back um, my trigger, so I'm getting tiny amounts of paint. And try not to put down too much paint in one area. We don't want to get a blob. And you can see how it just pops out immediately. It just adds a lot of visual interest. We're taking something that is uh, it's very monotone, and we're adding some visual interest to it without taking away from the realism of the vehicle. Again, small amount of paint and relatively low air pressure or a small amount of air. I think I've set my airbrush here to about 15 PSI. So a little bit lower pressure than what we were using. And you will see me, I've taken the needle cover off um, or the needle shroud off the airbrush and you will see me pinch the needle every couple of seconds. And what I'm doing there is I'm pulling the, the dried paint off my needle to ensure that I get um, a very clean spray. Airbrushes can be very temperamental with this, so try to keep your needle clean. Some guys will use a toothbrush with some um, thinner or an airbrush cleaner and just give it a quick scrub. Uh, with the Hardin Steenbix, they're designed that you can actually really pinch the needle and just pull anything off it. As long as you do it with just like a pull motion and pull away from the needle, um, you will clean off the airbrush or the, the needle pretty well. So now I'm slowly building up this. We want to be disciplined. We don't want to completely undo the darker color underneath. And I'm just kind of focused to areas where I think the sun would hit the most and just into the center of panels.
So with our main coats down, I'm going to lay down our camouflage scheme. Now I'm, I'm making a slight difference to what the, the paint set says. So I'm actually using a uh, light grey green from Model Air, reference 71.044, 7, which is their Oral M2 colour, which is a bit closer to the colour I want it to be, as the instruction manual calls for a slightly different uh, colour than what's included in this set. Now I'm freehanding this and basically I've thinned this down with a couple of drops and a tiny amount of air pressure and a tiny amount of paint. You could easily mask this off with blue tack if you want, basically just like um, use um, rolls of blue tack to create the pattern and then mask either side of it and then spray into the blue tack if you will. Um, I tried my luck here doing a freehand and for the most part it worked okay. I did get a bit of overspray and a bit of spitting in places so I'll have to go back with our sand yellow and clean that up later. But the trick here is just do small amounts at a time. Don't try to do big sweeping movements with camouflage. You don't have that much control if you do it that way. Um, especially when you're doing a free hand like this. So I'll just do a small little section at a time and then I join on to the next part and the next part and the next part. And that's the easiest way to do free hand camo. So now I'm just gonna take some German gray and I'm gonna paint in the dials of the instrument panel here. It was a bit tricky trying to get into it with the cab all assembled around it, but uh, again just using a long fine bristle brush made this job a lot more easy. So now I'm going to start painting in some of the canvas details, such as the top cover and the, the seats. And for that, I'm just going to use German Field Grey from Vallejo. The instructions say um, they wanted khaki. I made a bit of a artistic choice here to make it more of like a green canvas type of colour. Just for simple fact being is there's too much kind of yellows and buffs in this kit as it is from the desert camouflage and I didn't want to do a khaki or we'll just get lost in all that kind of yellow detail so I'm going for the screen just to break it up I've just tinned this down with a little bit of water and I'm just going to paint it in I'm gonna be a little bit careful now of course not to get this onto any area we don't want Again, I'm going to move this in any angle I have to, to be able to get into where I need to paint. So I'll hold this at some pretty extreme and pretty out there angles, because it just opens up um, that detail for me, so I can actually get in and paint it without painting over any of the detail I don't want to. Now I've sped this up ever so slightly, I think this is just sped up by times two, but I am actually being quite careful and taking my time when painting these and not to get the paint where I don't want. I'm also going to use this for the covers for the seats. Now I'm 
I'm going to take some metallic black. And this is what I use for painting in shovels and kind of metallic details for tools. So I often find using gunmetal um, can be a little bit too bright and a little bit too shiny. Which doesn't really look like um, the metals that you see on these tools. So metallic black is actually quite a good um, substitute for this. And again you just have to take your time and try not to get this colour anywhere where you don't want it. Metallic colours are very difficult to clean up, even if you wipe them away with a wet brush. Metallics often use actual metal flakes uh, or metallic flakes in their paint to give them their metallic sheen and that will leave a residue on the model that will kind of reflect. So just be very careful here not to get this colour anywhere we don't want it or it will ruin your life and it will make this uh, model process a lot more tricky and will really take away some of the enjoyment from the model, which we really do not want. So I'm going to use the same colour for painting in the jack as well as the pickaxe head. I just take my time, now it's a little bit of a tedious step, however it's better just to slow down, uh, pause anything you're watching, pause, take your headphones out of your head, stop listening to music and focus on this part. You really want to be in the zone while doing this. If any, if any distractions come in, you will paint outside the lines and it will be very, very annoying to clean all this up. So the best thing to do is just take the time and you have to kind of work with yourself here too. You can't just um, just charge blind into it, I find. So I'm going to take some Iraqi sand and this is going to be the wooden colour for the handle for the shovel and pickaxe. A buff colour would be perfect for this too. There's other like old wood colours that you can buy from like Panzerase, this range from Vallejo as well as AK and Mega also have these type of specialist colours. But I find um, the Iraqi sand works quite well. It gives that nice dried wood effect or that treat up wood effect. And we, we're going to put a wash over this when we come to weathering anyway just to give make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm using a very fine bristle brush and again I've just thinned down this model um, colour paint with just a little bit of water, just literally a drop. And I'm just slowly working it up. Again it's very tedious and I'm sorry you guys can't really see this but I have to hold it in such a way where I can see what I'm doing. And you just have to slowly work it in and just um, build it up bit by bit. Again you just have to be patient and you will get a good result. If you charge into this it's going to go everywhere and we really want to avoid that if possible. So there we have our tools all painted up and blocked in, ready to go. A little detail I forgot was the exhaust. I'm just going to take some gun metal from Model Air and just going to paint it straight out of the bottle. You could also paint in the leaf springs if you wanted to. I'm not going to bother because you're not going to see it. However, that's totally up to you and you can use the same colour if you wish. I tend not to worry too much about the undercarriage of vehicles that much, if I'm honest. You know, maybe it's a bit of a bad habit on my part, but you know, this is just, we all have our own standards of model building and that's just mine. So we're everything blocked in, now it's time to start preparing the model for decals and for the later weathering process. And for that, we're going to switch to a gloss varnish. And in this case, it's Vallejo Acrylic Gloss Varnish. I thinned this down with a couple of drops of airbrush thinner. And I'm just going to apply this over everything. Now the trick with gloss is try to do it in one or two light layers. Um, don't go too heavy too much. And if, if you apply a lot of heavy layers, it's very hard to knock the gloss out of the model when we try to matte coat it later. Now our reason for gloss coating it is twofold. First one, well actually there's three reasons. Firstly it protects all our work because gloss is a much harder and much more tougher varnish than a matte varnish is. It also 
prepares the model for the decal process. Some people don't gloss, I do, and what it does is it matches the same carrier film, uh, the gloss of the carrier film with the model, so it actually prevents silvering. And the third reason, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So I have all our pieces lined up here for um, our decals. We have our decal sheet. We have a very soft paintbrush. We have our decal softener. There's plenty of them out there. In this case, it's Micro Set from Micro Industries, which I think is the best uh, decal softener out there. I have a piece of sponge that I actually use for bedding the decal into the model. I prefer using that over a Q-tip. And then we have a little basin of cold water. Some people use warm water, it doesn't really matter. I tend to prefer using a scissors over a scample. Just for a simple fact, um, I find a scample can slip and you can cut into your decal, whereas with a scissors, you don't get this. And this is just an old nail scissors. So once we remove the decals from the sheet, we just throw them into our little basin of water here. And we hold it, we basically just keep it in there. And the, the test is it probably takes about three to five minutes for the water to activate the decal. And the best way to do is after about three or four minutes, just basically um, with a tweezers, pick up the piece. And if you can move the, the decal on its sheet with your finger, then it's ready. And I'm just going to dab it into some uh, kitchen roll here just to take away the excess water. So we're going to take our micro set and our soft brush and we're going to prepare the model. So we're just going to paint it on to the area where we want it to go. Now make sure your, your gloss has fully dried. We do not want your gloss coat to be somewhat still wet or still setting because it will react and then horrible things will happen. So leave that for 24 hours before we do this. So we just paint on our decal and then make sure we put some micro set over it. And I'm just going to use a scample to position the decal very gently so we don't tear or cut the decal. And then I'm just going to gently paint some more over it. And what the, the micro set is doing here is actually softening the decal and it's making it conform to the shape of the model. After a few minutes, we're going to take our little sponge here and we're just going to start very gently dabbing it down to push it into the model. I find if you use something like a Q-tip, you leave the lint from the Q-tip on the model and it can get very messy. A sponge will not do this. And it will still do the same thing. It will conform to the shape of the model better and it will gently push the decal into the surface without it tearing or ripping. So uh, now I'm doing, I'm just taking some gloss varnish out of the bottle I'm just going to brush it back over the decals once they've set. So this is going to protect one the, the the decals. It's also going to stop them from silvering. And also the other reason we gloss the model is I tend to use a lot of oils in paint, weathering my, my models. So by gloss coating we break the surface tension of the model and it allow enamels and washes and all that to actually perform better and you get more out of your wash effects by gloss coating. So with that, our model is fully painted up and ready for weathering. So I really hope you found this somewhat interesting, I hope, and give you a few ideas for some of your own model builds. Do join me in the next and final part of this series where we weather and get this model ready for the display uh, cabinet. I've been Shane. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Happy modeling, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.